The 2018 Korbalati Missile Korbalati, it's not a brand you're probably familiar with but it is known to artists, art enthusiasts, and jewel collectors. History aside, the family brand has decided to branch out into the automotive world, and its first attempt is a big one. I'm talking about, of course, the Korbalati Missile, a car that's billed with the high expectation of being the world's fastest car, Bugatti, Koenigsegg, and Hennessy be damned. Little about the car is known at this point, but it does sport a purely Italian design and promises 1,800 horsepower and a top speed that breaches the 310 mph range. The power credentials are certainly there, but whether or not it will live up to the hype remains to be seen. Skepticism aside, the made its debut at the 2018 Geneva Motor Show, so let's take a closer look. Corbalati Missile Exterior It's pretty clear that this baby was born and raised in the heartland for fine automobiles, the home of brands like Ferrari, Maserati, Lamborghini, and Alfa Romeo. At this point, almost nothing is certain about this Italian-bred hypercar outside of the seemly outrageous claims of power and speed. We do, however, have a full view of this monster of a car. It's pretty clear that this baby was born and raised in the heartland for fine automobiles, the home of brands like Ferrari, Maserati, Lamborghini, and Alfa Romeo. Up front, the car reminds wholeheartedly of the Ferrari 250. It has a similar nose setup with that wide but thin air inlet positioned right in the middle of near vertical headlamps that are integrated into the tall, but extra long front fenders. To be more specific, it looks like someone took the front end of a Ferrari 250 and stretched it out a bit. The side profile is defined by a simple, wavy ambiance that carries along from the nose all of the way to the rear haunches where things flatten out, on an incline, to provide the sweet spot for the engine's air intake passage. The muscular rear quarters match the front well, keeping things even from front to rear, while the door manages to sit right in the middle, only identifiable because of the necessary gaps required. The windshield and door glass come together, almost as one, to create a huge, 180-degree field of vision, a feature that also accents the slenderness of the greenhouse and sheer width of the body below the waistline. The bubble butt look is strong here, with the rear haunches being much wider than the front fenders. Corbalati took a very interesting approach to the rear of this thing. The bubble butt look is strong here, with the rear haunches being much wider than the front fenders. Of course, you can imagine that with 1800 ponies at its disposal, it'll need some rather wide tires back here. The taillights are simple round units with integrated reverse lights in the center. You can see the frame through the rear grille, which does allude to a bit of laziness, but hey, it's the power that's important, right? All told, the missile is 183 inches long, 80 inches wide, and 46 inches tall. It has a wheelbase of 112 inches and a ground clearance of just 4.72 inches, you could say it's a low rider, huh? It's pretty clear that this thing is Italian and, if I didn't know any better, I'd say there's some Ferrari DNA in there, but we'll leave that speculation here for now. Corbalati Missile Interior the interior of the missile is shrouded in a cloud of mystery at this point. The interior of the missile is shrouded in a cloud of mystery at this point. Based on the rearward engine position, this thing clearly doesn't have a back seat, so don't expect one. Of course, for all we know, this thing could be a single seater, with the driver's home positioned right in the middle, a feature that harkens back to the McLaren F1 and more recent developments that point to the central driver's position making a comeback. For now, however, we'll just speculate a bit, with the expectation that the interior will be lavish with fine materials and there is, more than likely, more than enough tech inside. After all, this thing is billed as being the fastest car in the world, you don't get there by being light in the tech department. An F1-like steering wheel, or at least something small, is likely and you can bet that the seats, or seat, is just a hair down from being a full-blown racing seat. A five-point harness is damn near guaranteed to be standard equipment. But, who knows what's really going on inside there? Corbalati sure didn't have anything to say at the Geneva Motor Show. Corbalati Missile Performance According to Corbalati, the missile can deliver a cool 1,800 horsepower through a six-speed manual transmission straight to the rear wheels. Corbalati didn't let us hear the missile run. 
In fact, very little was said about it, but there is some detail to share here. First off, the chassis is built from carbon fiber as are the body panels. Keeping this thing sturdy in the turns is a double wishbone suspension in the front and rear, paired with inboard adjustable dampers and controlled air springs. Power is delivered by a 9.0-liter V8 with two monster turbos, we assume, and a light alloy engine block. The cylinder head rocks four valves per cylinder, and there are four overhead camshafts, two on each bank, one for exhaust, one for intake. According to Corbalati, the missile can deliver a cool 1,800 horsepower through a six-speed manual transmission straight to the rear wheels. The rear axle has a limited slip differential, and the steering is handled by your typical rack and pinion setup. And, just as important as the power produced is the stopping power. Monoblock six piston calipers squeeze against carbon ceramic discs on all four corners. And that's it. That's all we know. Number 0 to 60 mph times to praise, or anything of this nature. However, Corbalati promises a top speed of 310 miles per hour, which would make it the fastest car in the world should it ever actually hit that mark. We'll certainly be standing by for that so stay tuned. Conclusion At this point, it's hard to explain what kind of emotions a car like the evokes on oneself. There's a bit of excitement, skepticism, even denial. There's no way a car can be that fast, right? Then again, the Venom F5 did hit 301 supposedly, so it's really not that far off. The horsepower figures are certainly there but what about the limitation of tires? Is there a driveline out there strong enough to support such a deadly amount of power, even in a fairly short burst? I remain tremendously optimistic but, for now, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. References Read more Geneva Motor Show news. If you liked this video, please share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.